Hey everybody, Jeff here, and today we're going over the shortest male operator and our favorite Australian here, Rainbow Six Siege, Mozzie. So if you're new to this series, this is where I dive into the history and the lore behind our favorite operators. I look into the past, present, and sometimes even the future for some of them. And honestly, you guys control who I do next by voting in the comments down below what operator you'd like to be seen done in the next lore video. And honestly, I'm like pretty sick right now, guys. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, I'm very nasally, my throat hurts a lot. I think I have the flu. Hopefully it's like no coronavirus or anything like that. Hopefully it's just a flu. But anyways, I'm still sick, weak, headache, sore throat, blah, all the bad stuff. Now, instead of me just sitting in my bed playing the new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game that just came out on my Switch, I'm going to just suck it up, tough it out, and make a spicy video for you guys today. I made a promise in a video I'd done a couple weeks ago where I said that I would do at least weekly uploads here on Sir Jeppy for YouTube. Okay, we're gonna do at least weekly uploads here for Sir Jeppy. No more of this week and a half stuff. Oh man, I just set a really big standard, All right? I gotta do it now, I gotta do it, can't back out. So I'm gonna stick by it, even though I'm sick and this sucks. We're gonna stick it out. So my throat hurts so bad and every couple minutes I have to numb my throat with like this numbing spray that I have. Actually, this video is sponsored by Chloraseptic. <laughs> it's a numbing spray that I spray in my mouth and it numbs the back of my throat. I have to do it every couple minutes or else it really hurts to talk. So here we go. All right, that'll last me for a couple minutes. All right, so I was just editing the video and I just noticed that uh, this video is definitely not sponsored by Chloroseptic. Definitely not. I don't know why I said that. Um, but yeah, how funny would that be if a throat numbing medicine company uh, decided to sponsor a gaming content creator? I don't know, that just was funny. Yeah, not sponsored by that, just thought it'd be a funny joke. I uh, forgot to say it in the video. So with all that out of the way, let's finally get into Mozzie's lore. So Mozzie's real name is Max Goose. <laughs> you, you mean to tell me that this man's name is Max Goose? Max is okay, but Goose? Are you? Oh my God. No, I'm sorry if any of your guys' names is Goose, but like, <laughs> That's a really bad name right there. Can I get an F in the chat, boys, for Mozzie? Now, he was born in Portland, Australia on February 15th, 1984, making him 36 years old as of today. Our little Australian friend really is tiny, weighing in at a whopping 126 pounds and a super tall height of five foot four inches. Wow, okay, I literally have 100 pounds on Mozzie. I, I literally do have 100 pounds on Mozzie. Wow, that makes me feel like a big fat piece of lard. So let's just go ahead and start with the earliest information I could find with Mozzie, where he was actually the middle child growing up. Now, Mozzie says that he had a really hard time kind of being noticed by his parents and like his peers and his siblings because he was the middle child and you know, the oldest gets their stuff, the youngest gets their stuff and the parents kind of forget about the middle child. Very quickly on, Mozzie developed a, uh, a very vulgar personality where almost every single sentence consists of a swear word. Now, if Mozzie were to ever make a YouTube video, he would be demonetized every single video or he'd have to edit out all the beep, beep, beep swear words because YouTube doesn't like any swear words anymore. You can only have a certain amount of video. Other than that, you get demonetized. So Mozzie was quick to become the intense daredevil when it comes to extreme sports. His extreme sports that he liked to do consisted of freestyle mountain biking, dune buggy racing, and the occasional hang gliding. Now, remember I said earlier that Mozzie had like a really hard time being noticed by his parents? Well, they started really noticing once he started taking place in all these dangerous sports, basically risking his life every single day. But once Mozzie told his mom that he was basically skydiving with dirt bikes, she straight up lost it. What, dude? So Mozzie would jump out of a plane mounted on a dirt bike with a parachute on and just jump out of a plane? Like, dude, this guy is a badass. 
Hats off to you, Max Goose. When Mozzie reached year 10 of school, he insisted that he would apply to the Australian Defense Force Academy. Upon completion, he would work in uh, combat and security. He later joined an infantry regiment where, you're not gonna believe this, specialized in recon missions on dirt bikes. Wow, who would have known? Now, Mozzie excelled in these missions where he was later called upon in Operation Catalyst. Now, Operation Catalyst was part of the Australian invasion of Iraq in 2005 where you know some of the infantry men including Mozzie would storm Iraq and just you know just get stuff done now after his notable success in Operation Catalyst he was hand-picked for the Special Air Service Regiment or SASR but if he passed the selection it would just stop talking back to his superiors now with Mozzie's background with off-road experiences and his quick thinking abilities making him able to analyze a scenario and calculate a way out he was later deployed to Operation Slipper and serve until the operations end. But probably one of Mozzie's most notable missions is where he took place in the 2015 Esperance bushfires in Australia, where he actually rescued firefighters that are trapped in an inferno of flames for the bushfires. Now, with his extensive history of his daredevil sports, Australian infantry part of his life, and the part where he rescued the firefighters from bushfires, he says that joining Team Rainbow is the most honorable thing he's done to date. Now, during the interview with Harry that every recruit has to do, Harry discussed with Mozzie that it's truly amazing how well Mozzie and his good friend Gridlock, the other Australian operator, work so well together. He goes on to say that he's rarely seen a pair of operators succeed so efficiently and flawlessly as Mozzie and Gridlock. Now, they really truly are best friends. All right, my throat hurts. Time for another squirt. Ugh. Man, this cherry flavor really sucks sometimes. Now, Harry also says that it really took him back when uh, Mozzie just every single word was just a swear word and just very vulgar. Now, Harry is a very professional person, so it probably caught him off guard to be in the presence of how should I say this? A, uh, a not a professional person at all. Yeah, Mozzie, yeah, not professional in the slightest. <laughs> but he actually does go on to say that swearing isn't so much of a bad thing and even sometimes helps out in high stressful situations when you let out a couple F-bombs here and there. Whatever swear word you desire to choose yourself. Now, when the time comes for the gadget evaluation, the one who actually does it this time for Mozzie is no other is Dokopi herself. Now, Dokopi is actually really impressed how how Mozzie's pest actually auto disintegrates when it comes in contact with the drone and successfully infects it. She notes that this is a really good thing that Mozzie develops because then say an attacker were to find the hacked drone, they could probably either take the pest off or reverse hack it to where they can gain control of the drone left. But since the pest already auto disintegrated, there's really no way they could get that drone back. So they ultimately have to just get rid of the drone, aka shoot that drone to hell. Now, Dokubi also goes on to say that really, the pest is kind of perfect. There's really not much she could do or really would manipulate with it to make it better because it's actually virtually like perfect. There's actually one thing that she does say that she could possibly do. That's to make like the radius of how far the pest can like launch onto a drone. But honestly, she doesn't really want to do it. Now, I'm sure you all know that Mozzie took place in a tournament of champions in front of a packed stadium to put the legendary operators here in Siege toe to toe, 5v5 attackers versus defense in front of a crowd. Now, Mozzie was on the defensive side of the battle. When now, Mozzie was actually the first one to be taken down when he stupidly peaked the, what was it, the blitz, the sledge, this left him in the down but not out stage, where Doc actually had to drag his 5 foot 426 pound heaven ass to the back of the room where he can try to revive him. But before Doc was able to pull it off, Habana got in there with her flashbangs, blinded Doc and Mozzie, and they were both taken out. Now, when Mozzie was back in the staging area halfway through the round, when Caviera gets eliminated from Dokupi after she almost really just killed Thatcher by choking him out with their legs. He tried to like calm Caviar down and ensure that they'll get there next time and that everything is okay and it's not so bad, but Caviera was just so pissed off, she swiped away Mozzie's hand, got back down, yelled at him, and then yelled at him in her Brazilian language. Mozzie's had nothing, he just goes, <clears throat> you need to relax. 
Well, that was a pretty bad Australian accent. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Let me know if you guys liked the video. Did you think that it was cool that he saved the firefighters in the Australian bushfires? Or did you like his presence in the Rainbow Six Siege Contest of Champions cinematic video? You can do so by leaving a comment down below. Also, make sure to follow me on all my platforms. Insta, Twitch. And actually, a new one for me is TikTok. So I literally just made a TikTok a couple days ago. And I already have a video that's reaching 600,000 plus views, which is like astronomically high for me especially when like on average my youtube videos hit about 150 views so like <laughs> 600 and oh god i'm dying that damn coronavirus <sighs> so like 650,000 views is like crazy and honestly man tiktok's really good for getting exposure so and i actually kind of like in the platform so really you guys should follow me Join me in my journey, and it's, I hate to say it, but I already have more followers on TikTok in a couple days than I do on my Instagram that I've been working so hard on for months, three, four posts a day, and the TikTok already has more, like, that's, that's a power of how one viral video can really make or break a certain content creator on a platform, so hopefully this huge exposure in TikTok I'm getting uh, transfers over all these extra viewers and fans over to all my other platforms so we can all grow up together Also, make sure to join the discord where you can interact with everyone from all the platforms piling in We have a hundred plus people in there. So there's always someone you can play with too There's usually always someone on uh, a lot of PC Xbox PlayStation players. I assign roles to there Yeah, join the discord if you want someone to play with leave a like and subscribe with notifications if you're new now with all that being said Jeppy out